on that. <laughs> I'm gonna put, let's get him on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that kind of show. <laughs> it was like Maury Povich style. We just oh, have like yeah. people show up around the corner. Exactly. That would be, be amazing. Well, oh, you're just talking shit about your boyfriend. Gabe, come on out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so what about your dad my dad something a lot of people don't know is my dad um is kind of like narcissistic he has oh i can't i'm not a psychologist so i can't say that he's a narcissist sure but he has narcissistic tendencies so um the way he looks at women is a lot different he look he's more misogynistic about things okay so me and my sisters were not like equals ever to him uh so he was above you yes so okay. when i said that of course he's like you can't do that oh he was always like that and i had a that's another thing i was forced to kind of in that moment when i told him and he already he was just like you can't do that and tell me what i can and can't do i realized i had to accept my father for who he was oh, okay i was like oh you know you're gonna freak out and you're always gonna be this way you're always gonna tell me what I can and can't right. do because that's you and that's fine I don't have to listen to you and that's what I was talking about how like changing my view on things is like people can say stuff I don't have to get mad about it and I don't right. have to oh my gosh like, so interesting ruin my life over it I don't have to like you know it's just annoying too because all these people are like stop stripping stop stripping and it's like who are all these people my family okay and it's like they were coming at me about this and I'm like, where were you guys when I was working three minimum wage jobs, living on my friend's couch in a studio apartment, digging through trash for recycling to pay my rent and just to eat, buy a pack of ramen noodles so I could have dinner. Right. I was eating ramen noodles for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Mm -hmm. I like, mean, it's good, but it's not that good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like living in the hood, like literally Sorry. the pimp knows my name on the corner. Like yeah. I'm literally like, <laughs> where okay. were you guys then? <laughs> it's so interesting how the, cause I had a very similar conversation with my uncles and my family. I have a big family. Both my grandparents had seven children. So I referenced my very large family often. And um, they, they were very concerned about my safety in the clubs. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you, and they're like, why didn't you go to college instead? I'm like, uh, that's where girls get raped. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just listened to a song the other day written by a millennial, sang by a millennial, who the lyrics of the song are chug, chug, chug. I love drinking. I love girls. I was just with a naked girl the other day. Chug, chug, chug. And I'm like, oh, that's what they're doing in college. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm in a strip club with like huge bouncers watching over me. Right. And like, conversely, you, you're, you're hanging out, you know, you're, there's pimps adjacent to you and there's probably other danger adjacent to you and yeah, you're making sure on I, just the had, I had to take literally like a different way home every night right so that versus you're in a club with a lot of people in a public place and there are people watching you at the door inside walking you to your car how is that any more dangerous it's not mm -mm. it's more way more safe and i told my uncle i was like listen at college like girls get pressured to take their clothes off and drink a lot of alcohol and like hang out with the boys and be oh be a cool chick like hang out and do this right. and do that no one pressure well there's pressure in the strip clubs but there's cameras everywhere and the minute i say no to something that's like that's what's happening it's a no exactly exactly so that that especially argument, with all eyes on you, you one hundred percent. All eyes are always on you. Well, hmm, girl, don't <laughs> my own But I mean, you know, I just find it really interesting that the the misunderstanding of how actually safe we are, mm -hmm. and versus what people think, right? Um, so you know, I just want to do some like myth busting, basically, yeah. in, in general, and just kind of you know stamp out the what's the word i'm looking for when people think something that's not true i guess not stigma but like stereotypes when, yeah there you go thank you words are hard got you yeah they are. <laughs> so have you talked to them again since then and things kind of like chilled out and they dropped it or is um, it like are they still trying to save you no, they're not trying to save me anymore. I am a lost cause to them. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. Um, <laughs> mm. They just know. I mean, my my family knows me. I've always been the child that's like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I am no like okay. little insecure little girl. Like right. I'm definitely like, oh, this is what I'm doing. When right. I moved to L.A., I was like, oh, I'm moving to L.A. next week. Bye. And they were like, oh, okay. 
<laughs> right. Like, I, they're like, I'm not even going to bother. She's going to do what she's going to yeah. do. Okay. <laughs> so something that you mentioned, um, which I kind of took to be one thing, and then you said something, and it just totally like blew my mind. So you said that you've learned to sort of overcome things that people say to you mm-hmm. then you just kind of let it roll off your back yeah um in my mind i was thinking oh she's talking about being in the strip club and like customers saying dumbass things and then you said you know that it was kind of in regards to you knew what your dad was going to say and mm-hmm. and he's he's going to be like he's like that i choose him for him and therefore i'm letting this roll off my back Mm -hmm. So because initially my question was going to be to you, like, how did working in the strip clubs and dealing with the bullshit that people say to us on a regular basis, like shape and form you in everyday life outside of the club? Oh, it made me better. It made me so much better. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I, I mean, I'm a social butterfly, but I don't always pick up on social cues. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I know, know. girl. (laughs) I've, I've experienced it. <laughs> right. I'm the girl where you're like, oh, look, that person over there, don't look. And I'm like, who? Him? Like, <laughs> so being in the strip club kind of taught me how to pick up on those certain social cues like that. Okay. Where I can be like in a situation. I can be in a dangerous situation and know like, oh, where I, I know where all the exits are. I'm thinking like, oh, this person's talking kind of crazy. I see this probably escalating. Mm-hmm. Like I know like when I'm in, just going out with my friends, I can like understand those situations and also along the lines of people saying saying stuff to me it made me desensitized to it yeah so now when people are like you're ugly and i'm like who me (laughs) 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 me i'm ugly oh (laughs) like you know what i mean it becomes funny after a while it is hilarious now when people try to make fun of me yeah they're like wow you're short or you're ash i remember like a customer was like oh you need uh he's like your lips are ashy you need lip gloss and i was like oh word hey um (laughs) i'll put some lip gloss on my lips for 10 bucks (laughs) you want to pay me to gloss these lips i know you 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 need to pay for this fantasy of me having unchapped lips right (laughs) (laughs) um but it's amazing also i've like gained so much like respect for myself Uh uh-huh and being like and so much confidence like Mm. Nobody can tell me nothing. I used to be like very nervous doing auditions for acting. Yeah. I can walk in a room now. I like just turn it on. Like it's like how Beyonce has Sasha Fierce. I have Ruby. Like I have my little stripper alter ego. That's oh, like Ruby's just, your stripper alter ego. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. I just turn her on and I walk into a room. It's like, it's just weird. I feel like it's like sucker punch where she's dancing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, my, my partner, uh, Antonia Crane and I were just talking about this this morning and I was looking at my Instagram profile and I was like, she's cute. You know, I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking at just like the tiles, you know, yeah. and I was just like, look at me. I'm like, eh, like in every, eh, in every <laughs> picture, you know, and like, that's not who I am about, like, I, I'd say that's me about 10% of my day and my mm-hmm. life. The other 90% is, like, organizing and planning and writing and, you know, talking to my cats in funny voices and yeah. ta- really talking to my family, like, digging deep, you know, reading books, like, watching The Office, like, I'm not just sitting at home naked, squeezing my tits all day. But if you look at my Instagram account, that's for (laughs) sure what you think I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. There's mad content to back that up. (laughs) (laughs) Every time I talk to you, I just imagine that you're in a pile of sticky notes. Like literally. Because I probably am. (laughs) Yeah. So you should see the lists of to do's on my desk. Anyway, so I think that's really interesting that you're saying it's like because I was talking to Antonia about it today, how it's just like. It's like this character. I just, yeah. I st- it's like stepping into another world. I was literally talking to someone last night and he was like, oh, I get that you guys like have your personalities and it's a defense mechanism. And I'm like, no, not wow, at all. That's <laughs> so off base. Yeah. I just like laughed at him though. That's like, that's the kind of stuff when someone says something to me and I just laugh. And yeah. I'm, you have to. I'm like, no, it's just a splinter of myself. Actually. Yeah. I am literally this confident in real life. It's just like I'm not half naked all the time. Yeah. And Gosh, I have so much to say about that. Yeah. They literally just think that that's all 
we are is that one dimension of that person right. cut to who are they at work versus who are they at home what or even who they are in a strip club i'm like well right. you're an asshole here 100 yeah, exactly. percent of the time so are you an asshole yeah. in real life yeah exactly <laughs> wow that's fascinating so what is like the craziest thing you think someone's ever said to you um hmm. what do i choose for my long list i know um probably oh you're really beautiful for a black oh, girl girl that's right i've heard yeah. you tell me that one before yeah that is the absolute most oh, it, that's just so like what are you thinking type of yeah. thing yeah i make everything a joke i always have like some form of a clap back every single so time so what was your clap back to that one? Oh, my clap back is like oh well you're white so do you have a little dick <laughs> what and then he was like oh, oh i didn't shit. mean it that way i meant it as a compliment but he like realized when i said that how dumb right. he sounded yeah i think it's really important to like it to let people know like how ridiculous your you're sounding because yeah. then they're just going to keep saying that and keep repeating that to other people and think it's okay exactly. to get away with um and i always make it a joke too so it's like kind of hilarious but kind of serious at the same right, time right right so they don't but, feel like specifically attacked yeah yeah because yeah. i know like i've also learned through my transformation <laughs> that uh fighting fire if you come at someone with fire you better expect a huge fireball back because yeah. that's exactly what happens but i learned that if i joke around if i joke to someone usually i'll joke back and i still can get my point across without totally yeah lighting up the place you know what i mean yeah i definitely feel you on that i feel like i, I don't go out after things with anger anymore i'm definitely like when you say something to me that's like really annoying or shitty mm -hmm. a lot of times my reaction now is and then I, you know i literally am like shrugging yeah. and um and and then i think of just a normal response not yeah. a like well fuck you then which is what you know i used to tell people like i will fucking kill you i literally used to threaten wow. death on people yeah i was a little i had a little anger inside <laughs> me um yeah. yeah that had nothing to do with stripping by the way um but yeah i think that's great it's to like yeah ease into it and be a little like kinder because i think a lot of people say that stuff mm -hmm. because it, no one's ever checked them and yeah. also, the, a lot of people have a hard time seeing beyond their own nose. So, as, yeah. especially if he's a white man talk, saying that to oh, you, yeah. they, they, he has no idea what it's like to be in your shoes. I'm not defending him by any means, mm -hmm. um, but they when when they're when they're checked, like how you did yeah. that, it really. I, I hope that that made him think. And, well, I and think he won't I do like learned from that just growing up in a white neighborhood, mm -hmm. like that being a black girl in a white neighborhood and growing up with that. I learn not to get angry because i started realizing that some people are just ignorant about certain cultures right right especially when it comes to stripper culture because everyone just assumes we're some kind of way yeah so when people say shit to me i like it goes back to the intention thing mm -hmm. not saying i'm perfect because i do mess up sometimes and i snap sure but i have been learning to like be like what is their true intention are they truly trying to cause me harm like do i need to like puff up my chest right mm -hmm. now yeah because this person may be harmful or are they just do the, is there a miscommunication or just some knowledge that they aren't aware of yeah and nine times out of ten it's just like people are just ignorant of the culture right so yeah so that that's actually a perfect segue into a topic that you and i have talked about in the past which is you being um a black girl growing up in mm -hmm. a predominantly white neighborhood and mm -hmm. how that sort of shaped you and um you know you have talked to me in the past about how you were guilty of um cultural misappropriation mm -hmm. do you remember that conversation that we had a little bit yeah it was me. like about um like braiding hair and oh, yeah. and like how you would braid the white girl's hair yeah right? and yeah. then can you can you talk a little bit about like what that was like learning that for you and like how it's kind of shaped your mentality um on that subject now